says she is only 10 years old. She's not schooling, simply doing as she's told. That's all the time we have for this segment. A special thanks to Chris Ronald for coming onto the program today. Uh, you've been listening to Smitten by the Written on CJSF 90.1 FM. My name is Kate Wee, and we'll see you again next time. The United Nations has declared 2012 International Year of Cooperatives, which is a celebration, but also a mystery. Co-ops have contributed to BC in ways most people have no idea about. Van City started because people living east of Main Street couldn't get mortgages. In 1928, the Prince Rupert Fisherman's Co-op worked with Japanese fishermen to stop their exploitation. Moto, the car co-op, started as a class project at SFU. Co-op history is fascinating, inspiring, and radical. And if you're 13 to 25, you can win a $1,000 scholarship when you help uncover it. You probably still have more questions. Good, you're starting to think like a detective. Go to the yes.ca to find out the details or like Cooperative Youth Story Project on Facebook. But hurry, registration closes March 23rd. You're listening to CJSF 90.1 FM, broadcasting from Burnaby Mountain, British Columbia. Welcome to Smitten by the Written on CJSF 90.1 FM. My name is KP Wee. Today we're going to play an interview that I had with author Cami Tang, who's from Hawaii and currently living in Northern California. She writes Christian romance and romantic suspense with Asian American characters. And you can kind of categorize her as a Christian chick lit novelist as well. Uh, we discussed a little bit about Cami's Sushi series, which first came out in 2007 with Sushi for One. The series centers around four American Asian cousins who are the only Christians in their large extended family. Only Uni was published in 2008, and as well as the third book, Sengo Sashimi, in the same year in 2008, with those two books centered on two other cousins. Then after a break, Kami wrapped up the Sushi series in 2011 with Weddings and Wasabi. It's a fun series where these four cousins are single and have to fight the stigma of the infamous family title, Oldest Single Female Cousin. So Kami and I discuss a bit about how she got the idea for that Sushi series. Uh, she also talks about her Protection for Hire series, with the first book of that particular series coming out late last year, and book number two is scheduled to come out this November in 2012. Kami discusses how Janet Ivanovich's Stephanie Plum character sort of influences her character Tessa Lancaster in Protection for Hire. So now let's listen to the interview with author Cami Tang here on CJSF 
90.1 FM. Good afternoon, everyone. You're listening to Smitten by the Written on CJSF 90.1 FM in Burnaby, British Columbia, 89.3 Cable FM, and on the internet at www.cjsf.ca, as well as on Talus HD channel 3706. My name is KP Wee, and I'll be with you today. It's my pleasure to chat with author Cami Tang in today's program. Cami writes Christian, romantic suspense, and humorous contemporary romance with Asian American characters, and her novels are set in California. Uh, Cami and I will be dis- discussing her writing as well as her life. So welcome to our program today, Cami, and how are you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on your program. Perfect. Now, let's get to know you a bit, uh, Cami. So to start things off, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself? Um, I grew up in Hawaii, and most of my family is still there. And I know that sounds kind of glamorous, but it's really not. <laughs> 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 because, you know, Hawaii is a very small island, and you have to fly to go anywhere. I still enjoy going back home. The food there is, like, beyond compare. But uh, I moved to California for college, and I just I stayed up here in Northern California ever since then. So I've been in California since about 1990. Okay. And how often do you go back to Hawaii? I try to go back once a year to visit family and, um, and just, you know, see everybody and, and soak in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Now, uh, I've read uh, some of your books before, Cami, and uh, the first thing I'm going to ask you is, uh, your tagline is, uh, romance with a kick of wasabi. Well, what does that mean exactly? So, um, uh, wasabi is a type of Japanese horse that is it's really, really strong. It's, com- it's really sinus clearing. It's a little, it looks like green, kind of like an avocado, uh, and it can be really, really hot. My, my father loves this stuff. I don't know how he puts it down, but he, he just piles it on his sushi. It's usually eaten with sushi. It gives it a really nice kick. It's supposed to clear the palate. And um, my tagline means that I write romance with a little kick of humor and suspense. Good stuff. And uh, you, 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 you wrote four novels in what you call the Sushi Series. Now, how did this uh, Sushi Series idea come about? So I have a lot of friends who have relatives nagging them about getting married. Well, when they were when they were single and in their twenties, there and even some of them in their thirties, they have relatives who are always nagging them about getting married. You know, every time they see them, they're like, "So I have a boyfriend, and you know, when are you going to get married?" And it's some of them actually have an, an actual oldest single female cousin syndrome in their families where. You know, it's kind of a stigma for them to be the oldest single female cousin. And I thought, you know, what if I have four cousins, two of their friends, who are the only Christians in their Buddhist family, and they have this same oldest single female cousin syndrome? And what would each of them do to either, you know, rail against it or try to get rid of the title? And so that's how the idea for the series came about. Good stuff, and I must say, I really enjoyed uh, reading uh, these novels. So that's uh, that's great. And um, so, so is, would it be fair to say, like the ideas kind of come from your group of friends and um, relatives, I guess? Um, yeah, and it, it was actually kind of funny because this whole older single female cousin syndrome—it um, actually isn't only in Asian families. I have a lot of friends who are not Asian who have the exact same kind of thing happening in their family. Um, I, I, you know, I grew up in a Japanese family, and I have a lot of Chinese friends. And I thought, you know, I think I, I, I was thinking maybe I'll write about um, a Chinese Japanese mixed family. And how their relatives would uh, would respond to, to to something like this, to the fact that they're already kind of different because they're not Buddhist like the rest of the family, mm-hmm. but you know they're even more different because they're still in their late twenties and they're still single, and you know most most of them are like, oh, when are you going to get married? Kind of a thing. So that that's kind of how the whole the whole idea came about. Okay. And uh, now, I actually was on your website uh, recently, Cami, and I read that um, you tore your ACL a couple of times while you were playing volleyball a few years ago. Yeah. And you even used that experience for one of your characters in your sushi series. Uh, can you tell us a bit about that? Like, um, how do you incorporate your own experiences into um, you know, your, some of your novels? Um, it's actually kind of weird because most of the time, because I think for most writers, you can only write about your personal experiences only so much before you kind of run out of things to write about. So 
most writers that I know um, write from imagination and also from extensive research and not necessarily from personal experience. But when I wrote Sushi for One, um, you know, I've, I've always loved playing volleyball. And I had torn my ACL twice. And I thought, well, you know, for a volleyball player, tearing your ACL and being out with surgery for an extended period of time is one of the worst things that can happen to you. Um, so I had that happen to my character. And um, a lot of the... For me, personally, the whole surgery and physical therapy experience was pretty bad. So it so happened that in that particular book, all of my character's experiences with the surgery and the anesthesia and the recovery and the physical therapy sessions, they were all true. <laughs> but, um, but in general, I don't have a whole lot of my own personal experience in my book just because I don't... I mean, my life is kind of boring, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, there, you know, a lot of the stuff that, that I write about is mostly imagination and just a lot of research. And that, that's pretty much true for, for all the writers that I know. Right. I, I guess a f- follow-up question to that would be, you know, um, let's say you're trying to write about um, a certain occupation. Um, how would you do the research to, you know, figure out how, um, well, what that occupation would be like for one of your characters? Most of the time, I try to interview someone who's in that occupation. Like for um, for the third book in the Sushi series for um, Single Sashimi, Venus is a, a game developer. And so yes. I talked to a whole bunch of my friends and finally got in touch with a couple actual game developers and asked them about their jobs and, um, you know, some of the technical aspects of their careers, um, you know, the technology, uh, you know, the, the educational requirements, all kinds of things like that to try to understand the career. But then Venus's actual work environment was a little different from each of the people that I interviewed because, they, you know, that just came out of my own imagination. Okay. But the actual background for her career came from interviews. Nice. And do you actually get to, uh, as a writer, do you get to uh, shadow people in their offices, uh, or do you just do strictly interviews uh, w- with them? I like to do more shadowing, but most people don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> so, a lot of times I have to rely on interviews. Right. Okay. Good stuff. And uh, we're speaking with Cammie Tang, uh, author, and uh, we're, you're listening to CJSF 90.1 FM. Now, Cammie, you've got the Protection for Hire series um, that you're working on at the, at the moment. Uh, the first one of the series, titled Protection for Hire, uh, came out at the end of last year in 2011. And uh, according to your website, you've got book number two, A Dangerous Stage, scheduled to come out in November of this year, 2012. Uh, what can you tell us about this Protection for Hire series that you're working on? Well, I really enjoy Anand Ivanovich's Stephanie Plum series. Um, I think he's up to number 18 right now. Um, and when I was brainstorming story ideas with my editor, she suggested a Stephanie Plum type of story for the Christian fiction market. And so Stephanie Plum is a valley hunter, which kind of explains all the excitement in her series and why she keeps running into problems. Um, and I wanted to come up with a character who would have ties to, you know, the criminal underworld to kind of explain why she kept having crimes under her way. Because, you know, I really love Miss Marple, but someone like her having so many murders happen around her just really isn't realistic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, a friend of mine suggested Japanese mafia, so I kind of I took that idea and just ran with it. And I came up with uh, Tessa's character, um, including her going to prison and becoming a Christian in prison. So when she gets out, you know, what kinds of things would she be facing, not just from her former associates, but also from her family, and what kind of pressures would she have to withstand? And then also, what kind of, you know, it it leaves the door open for a lot of uh, interesting adventures for her. Right. Okay. And, um, you know, I guess you have a scheduled uh, date uh, for, for November this year. What would be the writing process um, like, like in terms of um, time frame? Like, um, how long does it normally uh, take to have like, a novel uh, f- you know, f- finished? Um, typically, um, the, the publishing industry works 
pretty slowly, but also on a very set schedule. So I turn in a completed manuscript uh, by a certain deadline that's that's uh, filled out in my contract. Right. And that, that date is usually a year before the book actually is released on the shelf. So okay. I turned in A Dangerous Stage actually last year in November. Okay. And it's going to be on the shelf this year in November. Good. And then take the entire year for the editing, editorial to be able to, we do, you know, macro edits, which is large scale edits. We do developmental edits, which is smaller line to line edits. The, it goes through several copy editors and proofreaders. I think there's a, I, I, have, I don't actually know the actual number, but just from guessing, I think there's about 20 people who go through the manuscript before it actually goes out on the shelf. Okay. Um, and so it takes, and it takes that whole year to, 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 for the editorial process, and at the same time, you know, um, the art department is developing cover and all that other kind of stuff, too. Right. Okay. Good stuff. Uh, so I, I guess you were working on uh, another um another, I guess, part of the series as well then at this time, because as people say, writers don't stop writing, so I'm, I'm guessing that so <laughs> you're, you're still, you're working on a, on a new, a new uh, book for the series as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have the third book in the series due in November this year. Okay. There's no title for it yet. Right. Um, but, uh, and I have to, I actually still have to talk with my editor to see if she has any ideas for what she wants the story, the storyline to be like. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the, the full manuscript is due in November this year. Okay, fantastic. Now, you mentioned, Cami earlier that uh, your life is not interesting, but uh, I would disagree, because <laughs> in, in addition <laughs> to your writing, you do some other recreational activities as well. Um, you used to do volleyball, as we mentioned earlier, until you tore your ACL. Now you do some running as well. What got you start into running? So, um, when I tore my ACL the second time, um, and I went through surgery a second time, and um, if you read Sushi for One, you'll see that my surgery experience really was not very pleasant at all. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the second time was marginally better, but after that, I was I was like, no, I'm not doing that again. I am not going through a third surgery, so I quit volleyball. Um, after I quit, I was like, well, what kind of exercise can I do? And my my surgeon, my doctor said, well, you can go, you can do running. So I started running. I started with the Couch to 5K running program at first, and that was really fun. Uh, then I discovered the Jeff Galloway run walk method, and I used that method to train for a marathon. And I ran the Honolulu Marathon in December of 2010. And so right now um, I'm breaking in these special shoes called the Vibram Five Finger Minimalist Shoes, and um, they're supposed to help uh, change your gait and strengthen the ligaments in your feet to reduce pain from having flat feet. I have to carry flat feet. Um, and so, so far it seems to be working because uh, you said I have paid the first 30 minutes of my run because of my flat feet, but that's disappeared when using the Vibrant shoes. So I'm slowly starting to, to break into using the shoes and I'm hoping to be able to run another marathon, maybe in a year or two, um, using these shoes. Fantastic. Uh, and uh, you also, in addition to your writing as well, Cami, um, you offer tips and resources uh, to other writers. Like uh, you have a blog called uh, Story Sensei Blog where you respond to questions from readers about writing. Uh, You even have blog posts, for example, about um, dialogue punctuation. I was on that uh, page earlier uh, last week and uh, you you have several kinds of uh, suggestions um, all throughout your blog. So, uh, Cammie, why is it rewarding for you to want to help others with their own writing? So when I first started writing seriously, um, I got a lot of help from other writers and authors who gave just so generously of their time to help teach me how to write. And um, when I became published, I really wanted to give back. And so I started my Story Sensei blog with all the writing tips and stuff, kind of as a way for me to pass it forward because I had picked up so much when I had first started writing. Plus, I really enjoy, I didn't realize this until I started, but I really enjoy teaching, too. So that's been kind of fun for me. 
good stuff. And uh, again, the, the blog for for Cami is Story Sensei Blog. That's S E N S E I. And um, you know, we've also uh, been talking about your writing a little bit, but that's not what you've always done, uh, Cami, because you majored in psychology and you took pre med biology and chemistry in university, but uh, you in the end chose not to go to medical school. Um, now, since you're from an Asian background, obviously, I've got to ask you this: um, being a doctor, I guess, is a big deal, particularly uh, in an Asian culture, at least according to stereotype. How did you? How did your family accept your decision of not um, going to med school? Um, actually, my family's kind of unusual in that they did not pressure me at all in terms of my career. Okay. I have a lot of friends that I know. I know that they had family members who really were pressuring them about the type of job that they should get. And my family has always been very, very supportive of me. Even when I was in grade school and I told my mom, Mom, I want to be a novelist. And, you know, she didn't tell me, oh, but novelists don't make any money. She was just very supportive and encouraging to me. And she said, you know, you should go for it. I mean, she was very realistic. She said, you know, you realize that novelists don't make a whole lot of money. And she said, if you, that's what you want to do, then, then that's what you do. And she was always really, really supportive of me, um, and especially later in life when I, um, when I ended up becoming a full-time novelist. Is, is that right? You, you actually thought of being a novelist when you were in grade school? Yeah, I, okay. I've always really enjoyed writing. Um, but then I think later in high school, early college, um, I really I, I, felt, I, I felt God convicting me that I was more interested in having my name on a book than in writing for any kind of other purpose. Mm -hmm. um, and um, God kind of challenged me to, to lay my writing down. So that was a huge internal battle for me, but eventually I did. So that's why I majored in psychology and went to pre-med, because I thought I wasn't going to write again. Um, and uh, I got a job in biology research, which was really a lot of fun for me. But then I got laid off, and I felt God giving me the green light to start writing again. But that's when I started writing. I, you know, I still had other biology jobs at the same time. Mm -hmm. Then um, I got laid off. Um, I, or I actually, I quit one of my other biology jobs because I wanted to try writing full time for six months to see, you know, if I could get a writing contract. Up until that point, I had had quite a bit of success as a as an unpublished writer, and I thought, you know, I'd, I'd like to try this for six months. And right at the end of the six months is when I got my contract for Sushi for One. Nice. And so I um I considered going back and getting another biology job at the same time, but. Uh, my husband happens to be able to make enough to support me, mm -hmm. and so I ended up being a full-time novelist after I got the contract. And I haven't, I haven't gone back to biology work since then. That's fantastic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, um, what would you say, or what would your advice be to you know someone that uh, aspires to be you know a, a novelist or a writer? What kind of advice um, would you give that person? The biggest thing is to, for me, anyway, I, I kind of attacked writing the same way I attacked biology work. Um, I, I did a lot of research. I, I took a lot of classes, a lot of workshops, online workshops, things like that, to learn about the writing craft and the publishing industry. There are a lot of organizations you can join to help with that. I joined American Christian Fiction Writers, mm -hmm. but if you're writing other genres like romance or mystery or science fiction, there are other um, organizations that you can join. And they usually have, you know, online workshops or um, archived workshops that you can read to really give you an understanding of the publishing industry and the writing craft. Um, there's also a lot of um, resources online and a lot of books about um, what you can do to, um, to learn more about writing. Um, and then also, you know, finish the book. I think that's the, that's the big thing, too. A lot of people would like to write, but very few people have actually finished a novel. And so, um, so the two pieces of advice, of advice I would give would be to learn as much as you can about the writing craft and then just finish that novel. And actually, there's a, there's a page on my Story Sensei blog mm -hmm. that um, it's called, it's an article called um, I Want to Write a Novel and I Have No Clue What to Do. And uh, the link is on the right side of the sidebar. They go to storiesensei.com. Okay. 
Fantastic. Now, um, so how can um, I guess you've given us the um, the title of your blog? So can we um, get that from you again? It's um, so my my writer's blog is storysensei dot com. Um, my main website is uh, tammytang dot com, um, and I also have a blog um, that you can link to from my from my website. And those are the main places I am online. Perfect. So again, that's camytang dot com as your website. That's C A M Y T A N G dot com, and um, there's a blog within the camytang um, dot com website. And you also have a Story Sensei blog, which is Story Sensei. That's S E N S E I dot com. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, so you know, it's uh, fantastic to you know be able to keep up with your latest happenings going through uh, those uh, websites. So that's great. I want to thank you, um, Cami, for taking the time to join us on today's program. We really appreciate it. And uh, I know that you're working on the third book for the Protection for Higher series that's uh, due in November. So um, uh, we'll hope that you'll be able to um, you know. Complete that successfully. Uh, so thanks, Cami, for joining us on Smitten by the Wind on CJSF 90.1 FM today, and thank you for your time. Thank you so much for having me. Perfect. Uh, so that was author Cami Tang, who writes Christian romantic suspense and humorous contemporary romance. We'll take a short break, and we'll be back with you in a moment. Thanks for listening to today's program. A special thanks to Cami Tang for coming onto our show. Once again, you can check out Cami's works at camytang.com. That's C A M Y T A N G. Dot com, where she also has a blog on there. And the second website that she has is StorySensei.com, where she offers some writing tips. That's StorySensei, Story, S-E-N-S-E-I.com. We hope you enjoyed the interview, and my name is KP Wee, and we'll talk to you again next time on Smitten by the Written on CJSF 90.1 FM.